Yeah, uh, let's wait two more minutes, then uh, we can start. Okay, Bharat. Uh, Kabri ma'am, uh, please uh, introduce uh, yes, our speaker today. Uh, uh, yeah, Varad sir, uh, Sadha sir told that some more students will join, so we'll wait for two more minutes. Okay, oh, that's okay. why I'm waiting. Just uh, give me two minutes. Okay. Good afternoon, all. Uh, Varad sir, I'm audible? Uh, yes, ma'am, it is audible. Okay. So, good afternoon, all. Now we are going to start our SOA weekly academic lecture, uh, series 29. I'm Dr. Kaviri Das, working as professor in uh, computer science department, uh, ITER Sikhyo Anusandhan University. On behalf of the computer science department, I'd like to welcome Mr. Minaketan Ponda, who is currently working with the ESB Dublin as a specialist. He did his B.Tech in Electronics and Telecommunication, M.Tech in CSC, and MBA in Finance. Mr. Ponda has more than 20 years of work experience with IT industry. 
He has worked as a lead consultant in Wipro, uh, Wipro and promoted to role like solution architect and principal consistent, consultant. Prior to joining Wipro, he worked in Spanco, Allsoft, Sun India and L1 Technology. Mr. Panda has also been a visiting faculty in various engineering college and university. Mr. Panda is the founder of a startup named as Orites Consulting Private Limited. He has some deep research interest in quantum computing. His startup also has a research very vertical to promote quality research in the country. From the literature perspective, Mr. Panda is author of two motivational books for the youth. Uh, one is two stories and another is follow your dreams. And currently he is working on another two books. He has a deep interest in the history of Kalinga along with social, cultural and economic development of the state and as well as the nation. So today's topic is uh, the glory of Trikalinga and its special fabric and judicial system. So I welcome to Sir uh, Minakatan Pondashar to start the webinar now. Uh, thanks, ma'am. And uh, thanks for the introduction. It's a pleasure for me to give the uh, talk on this particular topic, the glory of Three Kalinga. Till date, I always give the uh, uh, seminars on the technology. So first time I'm giving a seminar on a topic which is very close to my heart. So probably it will be a worthful time for all of you. Uh, so let's start. So I'm starting this whole discussion with a uh, painting. So this painting is known as the oldest artwork and it was found in Indonesia, which is almost 45,000 years old. Now, if we think 45,000 years is a very old and there are no paintings which are uh, before this, that's wrong because in Odisha, particularly in Yogi Mata uh, uh, Hills in Noapada district, we got the paintings which are more than one lakh years old. So that's how the glorious past we have. Now, if I come to this glory, first we are going to enjoy some glories and then I will define what is Sri Kalinga. Apart from painting, if we will go to the city planning, you can see this diagram which is explaining the city plan and it was found in Kalahandi district uh, in a Guda Handi Pahada. So in this diagram, you can observe that there are very clearly mentioned the residential areas, the commercial areas, the water lakes, other stuff. Now to appreciate this particular diagram, if I'll show you some diagrams which are around 7,000 years old or 5,000 years old, you can clearly observe that in those diagrams are not so clear as the TVS diagram. So you can see the 7,000 years old Turkish city map, which is not very clearly mentioning the residential area, commercial areas. Whereas in previous diagram here, you can observe the residential areas very clearly and the assembly area, the commercial areas. Similarly, uh, there is a very popular civilization called Mesopotamian civilization. And the city map or city plan we can observe from the Mesopotamia, which is also not so clear. So from those reference, we can appreciate our city plan, which we found in Gudahandi, uh, Kalahandi. Now, if we are thinking that just we are developing the paintings and diagrams that is not true just some days back there is a uh, traces of civilization which is more than 4000 years old it was found in durga devi village in balasore now that civilization are able to develop some maritime activities and those maritime activities ports and other stuffs are linked to the ganga valley okay so the same time when the Harappan civilization was there in Ganga Valley. And during that period also, they are developed a soil made uh, ram horse, like which are preservable and survived till date 
from the storm earthquake or all other stuff like they use the clay the red clay to develop those herbs and those are still available in durga devi villages now apart from that the odia language which is having the most number of uh, scripts after sanskrit now from the language perspective you can observe that our uh, writing is very circular in nature which is useful for the writing on the uh, leaves that's how we can understand the odia language is one of the oldest language now the painting which i already shown to you uh, from yogi mata hills uh, that painting also represents some of the scripts like that painting is around 1 lakh year old and that painting itself showing some scripts that mean the odia language itself is a very old language we need to do some more research on this but for the timing we can understand the odia language has more number of scripts after sanskrit similarly we are not only writing the books or we are developing the scripts we are also good in teaching like the uh, four universities in jajpur which is pushpagiri ratnagiri lalitgiri and udaygiri these universities are found on a concentrated area of jajpur across the kalinga there are lot of universities that means we are a educational hub as well and this this is not only related to the script education or city plan we have a very good business relationships with southeast asia and rome now most of the people you know that the indian subcontinent uh, sea route was developed by um, we called him uh, vasco da gama who identified the route from europe to india but practically in old days in ancient days odia people or kalingan people are doing the business between the southeast asia and rome there is a story about kharbal who fought with the greek soldiers and pushed them away uh, today's afghanistan okay so there are relationship there are uh, links between kalingans and the uh, europeans as well similarly is not only business or trading relationship there are strategic relationships as well because we can observe there are a lot of diagrams pictures epics and uh, you can statues which are explaining how the kalingans are controlling the boats the water routes and providing the protection to the businessman you can see here sanghamitra is landing in sri lanka through a kalingan boat similarly you can see there are sea fighters which are you know, protecting the boats and the businessman apart from that odisha is the place where the rice cultivation started so the domestic rice have started before 3000 bc from korapur odisha now this sign of this we are celebrating the manavasa gurubar and also if we observe the tribal painting we can found lakshmi in the tribal painting who holds the pot which is explaining before 300 bc we have a uh, rich culture of cultivation now everyone is know about ram janmabhoomi people want to go that place but lord ram also doing the pilgrimage during their time to mahindra giri now mahindra giri is a place in korapur where pandavas and ram both came for pilgrim because uh, it was believed that mahindra giri is a place where lord parashuram is doing the yoga or tapasya okay and who is chiranjeevi means still today also he is there but these things need to be developed so maybe more people come to the real place which is mahindra giri in korapur there is a temple in remuna baleshwar and it is believed that lord that statue of lord krishna was made by lord ram now it's kind of a time travel like lord ram is almost 
टू थाउजेंड इयर्स बिफोर लॉर्ड कृष्णा बट इन हीरो चोरा गोपीनाथ मदन मोहन स्टैचू दैट वॉज क्रिएटेड बाय लॉर्ड राम बाय हिज ओन हैंड एंड इट वॉज बिलीव एंड इट वॉज स्क्रिप्टेड मल्टीपल प्लेसेस इन दोज एरिया इन रेमोना एंड अदर प्लेसेस ओके सो नाउ लेट्स कम टू सम अदर ग्लोरीज लाइक फैशन इन कलिंग so everyone knows about konark temple now konark temple when you observe there are statues which are having heels like if you observe the sun god he put uh, high heel boots okay in his leg whereas if you observe the dancers around the konark temple you can observe they are using the high heel sandals similarly they also wearing the trousers these days those trousers are called western trousers they are using and those fashions are of 12000 century 12 uh, 12th century which is during the time of narsingha dev now we have also foreign relationship you can observe in the relief boat there are some pictures of people they are not look like odia people they are look like from uh, southeast asian people they come to the king to get some relief and they send through the boat similarly here you can see there is a giraffe and giraffes never been the animal from india so giraffes are from africa so we have relationship in africa we have relationship with the southeast asia if we discuss about the current days now it is Uh, as per the historian the anti colonial resistance in odisha is the longest and that is longest in in india as well like it was from 1767 to uh, 67 to 1857 which is around 90 years the longest and the uprising also uh, very long which is called as paika vidroho which is known in odia as fight for dignity like uh so that is also a very long period so those are the glories for us now if i'll discuss this glorious past glorious uh, geography and glorious culture it will go on uh let's come to current state now the current state is looks like this in 2022 feb and if we'll go just back which is 1st of january 1931 during that there was a gold table or round table discussion happen in uk and they proposed this area to um, madhusudan das now this area is bit bigger than the current state and it includes lot of areas from uh, east to west and uh, north part if we we'll go just back in 1721 this is a diagram which was from the german map publisher okay it is of 1721 now this area you can observe that the south part of ganga river and it's come till to the uh, mohadadi or the bay of bengal and the total area is known as orissa now this is a evidence that orissa is far bigger in past time now here there is another evidence which is from uh, the dynasty called gajapati dynasty now gajapati dynasty's ruler uh, the the most successful ruler is kapilendra dev now kapilendra dev area you can observe like this in this diagram but it is bigger than that because when we are putting the name like sri 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 gajapati godeshwara karnataka uh, nabakuti karnataka kalavarga sir so you can see the karnataka area is still not there the kalavarga area is there but uh, somehow i found this diagram in the internet so i put this one so this is the area during the gajapati dynasty we go behind that like ganga dynasty which is in between uh 1038 AD to 1434 AD you can observe the ganga dynasty is also have a larger area which is including the uh, south part of ganga some part of uh, you can see the middle uh, central india and it's a bigger part 
if you again go back like to the bhomakar bhomakars are before uh, ganga dynasty and these bhomakars are having both sides of ganga river like north side uh, and south side and they ruled till the uh, today's assam okay so you can observe this area is so bigger and before bhomakars we have a bhanja dynasty which is uh, the capital was in kendujar and uh, the uh, one of the successful uh, emperor from bhanja dynasty was satrubhanj uh, who was very big area now before satrubhanj we have a uh, chakravarti king king kharwal who who was there for 225 bc to 380 that was um, the dynasty for <clears throat> um, uh, mahamegavan aira kalava and you can observe the area which was ruled by uh, kharwal now before kharwal also as per a jain scripts there was a king called chakravarti karakandu now chakravarti karakandu had a very uh, successful campaign across the globe so in jainis script there are two chakravartis one is kharwal other one is karakandu now the whole discussion or the glory i discussed till now to establish that we have a glorious past and from that glorious past we can understand how the influence of the kalingas across the globe you can observe the bay of bengal and the indian ocean is known as mohodari sure. okay so so now we are defining the three kalinga till now we understand how glorious is our past now we are defining three kalinga so what is three kalinga so three kalinga basically is of three parts now um, with the time this definition of three kalinga was destroyed and it was now minimized uh, mostly from the rulers from the south they destroyed the definition of three kalinga the practical definition of three kalinga includes the kaling nagar which is known as the ashtakshetra now ashtakshetra is a kind of a nucleus of three kalinga and surrounding that there is uh, gadjats so those gadjats are called 60 64 gadjats or 64 gadjats which is covering the kalinga nagar and protecting them and on top of that there is another um, area which is called 36 gad or uh, 36 gadjat so so that's how the whole state of kalinga is formed and beyond that the area is known as bahista kalinga apart from that there is a area you can see in this uh, diagram which is known as the kalinga sagar area so this area also influenced by the people from kalinga now when i am explaining all this i need to keep some proofs okay so let's uh, discuss about some proofs now if you understand the odia language and the uh, bali language or balinese you can observe that the people from india okay known as kalinga in those areas like southeast asia areas the people from india are known as kalingans now you can see there are a lot of similarities here like muha is known as muha bo is known as bu and all all of those okay let's go to some scripts you can observe the script in java and script from odia the script from java and odia are very similar you can see here ta is there no is there ta ra all are very similar you can observe the similarity in the temple architecture as well so this is the temple in old town the uh, right side one and the left side one is a temple from indonesia purely you can observe the similarities so this is purely the kalingan architecture by whose these temples are developed if we understand uh, there are records maintained by the chinese people from there also we can get some more proofs like one of the chinese traveler mong jing uh, who traveled in between the period of 635 to 713 noted down that it was 30 days sail from tamralipti now tamralipti is a place 
uh, called Tamlik in West Bengal these days, and from there to Andaman Nicobar. And it took 20 days yeah. only to travel rest of majority distance to China. He also said that it took three months to sail from Sri Lanka to Java Island and including the stoppage for repair to the ships on the way of Sri Vijay, like these days it is known as Singapore. This gives an instinct about how difficult the back breaking task, like um, from sail from Mahodadi to the Kalinga Sagar. He also mentioned that the Odyssean ships passed through the Andaman Nicobar Island, which probably was used the midway supply. Okay. So these scripts are available, and this is one of the proof. Similarly, from India uh, in fifth century, Kalidas, uh, who is the one of the greatest poet, he mentioned the Kalingan king as the Mahodadipati. Now, Mahodadipati means who rules over the Mahodadi. Uh, Mahodadi is combination of today's Bay of Bengal and Indian Ocean. Now, the, in the 6th century, there is a uh, book called Manjusri Mulakapa. In that book, you can find the Kalingan uh, uh, Sea, which is called as Kalinga Udra, which is currently known as Bay of Bengal, is defined very clearly. Moreover, during the Kharwal's rule, he defeated the Cholas, Pandyas, uh, Satyaputras, and Keralaputras, and Tamrapanis in Sri Lanka, who are at that time or at that period, uh, at their highest peak of the maritime activities. That means Karbal has the um, maritime warfare superior from them. Now, if we go to some other records like Tang Dynasty records, and it was clearly mentioned in the Tang Dynasty records that Bhomakara princess Subhakara, they carried uh, Buddhist monks, scrolls, and text in 1798 AD to their court as a gesture of friendship. Now you can see the Tang dynasty, which is currently in China, you can see the route, and the whole route is controlled by Kalingans. Apart from that, if we go through the historical evidences from Greek ambassador Megasthenes, he mentioned Kalingan army, and he mentioned that there was one lakh of Kalingan army and of 60,000 soldiers, 1,700. They are descendant from Odia prince Kalinga Magha. Now, all from this, we understand that Odisha uh, rulers are capable for the naval warfare, and they also have proof to protect the sea and protect the routes. There are some uh, ships which are uh, we found in the Paika Kheda. That's a book, and you can observe these ships and these boats are very similar to modern days nav naval boats. Like we have uh, aircraft carriers, we have destroyers, we have fleets, we have uh, live boats, and you can observe all those kind of boats in this Paika Kheda, Chaturi, Nadia, Rajpura. Uh, all those stuff are very similar to that. Now, uh, again, if we go to the Sinhali history, now Singhabahu was the son of princess of Kalingan kingdom and was a lion is mentioned in the uh, history of Sinhali. And uh, he come from an area called Singapur, which is near to the Jajpur, and his son, Prince Vijay, would emigrated from Kalinga to Lanka and become the, uh, you can say, the fathers for the people in uh, Singhali. So it suggests that there are influences in Sri Lanka as well. Now the influence is also in Burma and Myanmar because in Burma there are places called Kalinga Rashtra and Utkal. So like these names are used there and they also use this name till date. So if somebody will travel to the Myanmar or some places, they can find these similarities there. And Saila Bhama dynasty is one of the dynasty who moved from Palur, uh, which is Kalinga coast near to the Barampur area these days. And they moved 
from there to the place we call java island now java island is a big very big area okay which includes uh, more than 6000 islands and there are a lot of places where you can find the traces of uh, the kalingan architecture kalingan script all those stuff now once the solar bhamas dynasty established the kingdom there after that they have like uh, they have a negotiation with the leaders like java sumatra borneo bali and part of cambodia and malaya and they established their influence across the whole area so these things you can find in a hingmo uh, uh, concept like which is called the uh, uh, mother of kalingans so in that uh, tradition you can find which is the records in china you can observe the similarity in the temple architecture as well so you can observe the konark sun temple and you can observe the myanmar temple which is very similar okay so there are a lot of similarities and if we observe some coins from myanmar or from burma you can observe they use the symbols in those coins which are very uh, very much used in the hindu tradition or in in jagannath culture even if if we go to the um, different places in odisha you find the brahmin priest are known as panda and the same thing is also called in bali they are called as pandan remarkable the river mahanadi and mahindra taneya including the holy mountain which is as i mentioned mahindra ji is the place where chiranjeevi parshuram is living and these things are mentioned in their books and they also chant during the their pujas uh, the dance form of bali and uh, the dance form in odisha are very similar i can show you some pictures uh, besides that there are other similarities like boita bandana and there is a ceremony is also uh, happening that is called namgen ceremonies ceremony which are very similar okay and both are also uh, celebrated on the same day kartik purnima and obviously odisha in odisha we are celebrating the bali jatra which is another evidence that we have influence there in southeast asia so you can observe the dance forms one dance form is from uh, uh, java other dance form is from odisha and you can observe both the dance forms are very similar in nature finally lot of records we found from sang tang and han dynasty which are rulers for china now they mention multiple times that kaling is a potential threat for them now this is a diagram which i put here uh, which is developed by the britishers and if you observe here china is far away from india and in between that there are tibet burma lot of things are there so these three dynasties sang tang and han dynasty why they mention uh, kalinga as a potential threat for them why they are very keen to understand the strength of kalinga because we have the influence till china now if we define the three kalinga its combination of kalinga nagar which is which is called as ashtakshetra now these things are still available today ashtakshetra including the sanka khetra which is puri chakra khetra which is bhubaneswar gada khetra which is jatpur padma khetra which is konark tulasi khetra which is kendrapada Uh, garuda khetra bani khetra and sakti khetra now each of this area has a specific task to do uh, probably if i'll get some more time i'll explain in detail what is the role of each khetra it's like the capital of kalinga and on top of that there is a circle of 64 gada jata each gada jata each uh, it's having one ishta devi they known as uh, gada chandi and after that 36 gada jatas are covering or surrounding those 64 gadjas those are called uh, 
Gadjat and Chhattis Banabasi Gadjat, which is mostly the Dandakaranya area these days. And uh, those Gadjats are uh, protected by Banachandi. And the Bohista Kalinga, which is about 52 Sakti Peters. Now, the Kalingan ru rulers never, uh, I can say, rule those areas because they have influence on those areas and they are controlled by 52 Sakti Peters. And similarly, the Mohadadi, which is like the Bay of Bengal and Indian Ocean, who rules that, they are known as Kalinga Dhipati. And finally, the Kalinga Sagar area. So if I mention who is the three Kalinga Adhipati, that means the person who has the influence on Kalinga Nagar, on Kalinga, on the Kalinga Sea, and he is also controlling the Mahadadi. Now, I mention many things, but what exactly we define as a Kalinga? So the defining Kalinga, like who is the king? The king is like Balabhadra, who is known as Mahabahu, who is the mother. The mother is Adi Sakti, whom we call as Ma Bimola, who is the providing the justice. Now that is Mahavishnu, which is known as Kaliya. Now who is the queen for this? It is Mahalakshmi, the protector of Kalinga Nagar, the capital is Mahabir, whereas the protector of the Kalinga is Mahakal. And the Ishtadevi is Adyakali, now who is in Bengal mostly Mahakali. And the holy river is known as Mahanadi. And we worship to the Harahari, which is in Lingaraj, Mahalinga. And, um, and where the gods are doing their meetings, it is in Kapila, so that is called Mahakailas. And obviously, our food is Mahaprasad. So now I define what is Tri Kalinga. Now, today's topic, why this Tri Kalinga is so powerful and why it is established and how it is there for a long period, means up to 1803, starting from one lakh year before. Now, the real power of Kalingan society is their fabric and their judicial system. And I'm very much uh, influenced by the judicial system of the Kalinga. I'll discuss um, in our next slides how it is very useful. Now, this is the current judicial hierarchy where you can observe there are district courts, high courts, Supreme Courts, benches, like if some uh, decision is not acceptable, then the people can go to the Supreme Court review and new benches are formed, like it started with single judge bench, two judge bench and many more. And finally, the president. And this is very similar to the Kalingan justice system, which is linked to the uh, village Pradhan, that linked to the local temple Pandas and then Pandas and then Mukti Mandap and finally Lord Jagannath, who is kind of precedent for us. Now, these people use all the four pillars, which are very useful to provide the justice. Those four pillars are information awareness, metaphysics and psychology, intelligence, logic and philosophy. Now, let's discuss one of all of them and how that is influencing the justice. Now, information and awareness. Any society which is a civilized society, they always try to put some legal system. That legal system will make the society disciplined. Now the major issue to implement the uh, laws are information. So in Odisha, in Kalinga, they use multiple techniques to uh, propagate those information into the society. Like they use Dengura Bala, to spread the notice or notifications. They use the Bhagavata Tungi to brainstorm. If there is a new law come into picture, they can discuss among themselves with their uh, near and dear in, in Bhagavata Tungi. They have a concept called uh, Pala Gayakas and Chadhi Gita, through which those are FAQs. They explain a particular topic, they explain a story, and they explain what is the law 
and how this law is influencing the society. And obviously, there are door-to-door -door campaign by Chakulia Pandas to explain, okay, this is the stuff you need to follow these things from these days, otherwise these are the consequences. And the explanation is happening through Jatra and public participations are happening through Sahi Jatra. Now, Sahi Jatra is now only concentrated in Puri, which is um, started by Ananga Bhima De long back. And finally, if somebody is not aware of those things, so there are rude reminders. Those are from the Gada Jatra. So people, Ghanta Patua, who put one um, Devi or Mangala, and they come and told, okay, you will be like, will be like killed if you not follow this law. So you can observe these things are still there in Odisha. Uh, like you can observe the Ghanta Patuas are there, the Pala Gaikas are there, Chodhe Gitas still there, Bhagavata Tungi and Chakulya Panda, all are still available as the traces how our society is propagating the information into the uh, people. The second one, or the second pillar, which is related to the metaphysics and psychology. Now, this is very scientific in nature, but very complicated to understand. Now, when uh, I come across this Sunya Sanghita, which is actually a book which don't have any scripts, okay, it's blank, and you need to think a question, and automatically it will give you the answer. So, Sunya Sanghita, if somebody is from Kakadpur or nearby area, there is a place still exist where you can observe these things are happening. Okay, so Sunya Sainta is a book which is based on the metaphysics, which is giving the answer based on your questions. Then Nakha Darpana is another technique where you can crystal gauging the past and the future. And from there you can understand who is the culprit. And it was followed in Odisha for 7,000 years to identify how their family members are there in, in uh, Southeast Asia or in abroad. Similarly, there is a Kalesi integration. Kalesi integration is a very different kind of stuff. And uh, it's like somebody will behave like he's a superhuman and he'll started integrating the people to speak out. And finally, the provocation stories. So these all techniques are used to get the uh, uh, justice for the people. You, you can observe here the Sunya Sainta is there, Nakha Darpana, and Kalesi integration is also happening. Apart from this, there is an intelligence team. Now, yeah, Indian intelligence raw is there, IB is there, there are seven types of intelligence in India, but we don't have any judicial intelligence. Now, this judicial intelligence, which is very helpful to provide the exact judgment or exact justice to the people and it includes three kind of people it it gathered the intelligence from the priest from nahaka nahaka is kind of a person who developed the um the jataka for a person uh, who just take birth so and astrologers astrologers are predict so uh, nahaka and astrologer are very similar but they are a bit different like astrologers can read your palm or the stuff and they have a very unique kind of psychology by which they can read the human brains. Whereas Nahaku is a kind of a mathematician who predict from your birth chart what would be your future. And all this stuff they are gathering from the common people and providing uh, the intelligence to get the justice. They also use the Panjis, like the Madala Panji is there in uh, Jagannath temple. Panjis are uh, maintained at the local level to highest level, which is uh, till the Jagannath temple, where they mention all your uh, predecessors and ancestors' details. Okay. That means they also follow the history, the family history, the achievements, what, what are the potential ability of this person and how they are come to this state of, uh, uh, let it be crime or injustice. So they consider all of this. Now, personally, I believe this intelligentsia should be there in Indian judicial system as well. Uh, um, because apart from they providing the information, they're also providing the shelter, like somebody is uh, out of the village. 
Now these people provide them shelter in temples. They provide them security. So that's how the whole judicial system is very clean. Now you can see the priests. They do 16 kind of sanskar throughout a human life in in Hindu culture, and through that they know the people very well. Mahakas prepare the the life book of a person and the astrologers who can predict what exactly you are looking for. So these people provide the intelligence and uh, uh, to the judicial system. And finally, the logic and philosophy. <clears throat> now, these most of these judges, which are known as pandas, they, they use the logics from Purans and the uh, Vedant, and they uh, study the philosophical books to the, do the judgments. They create the spiritual fear to tell the truth as well. So philosophy are reflecting in the Odia Dhaga Dhamalis. You can observe there are a lot of intelligent Dhaga and Dhamalis which are used in a very brilliant manner in our society. And finally, you, you can find in the modern history, from the ancient history, I didn't find some so many people, but in modern history, you can find Fakir Mohan, Gopala, there are books called Gopala Bhanda, Jadumani, uh, Kasinatha, uh, he's the minister in the Kapilendra Dev, Chintamani. So these people who are uh, philosophically and logically very sound to provide the judgments in the modern era. But yes, uh, people follow these things to get the judgment. Now, finally, if the case is not solved, uh, finally, it will go to the Lord Jagannath who will decide which, in, which was is correct, which was is wrong. There are a lot of examples on that. I put only two examples. One example is related to the Kapilendra Dev, uh, when he confused and understand, don't understand whom to make as the king. Like there are two sons of Kapilendra Dev. One is Purushottam Dev, other one is Hambhira Dev. And Hambhira Dev is uh, means uh, eldest, and he is more capable, more powerful. But still, then Lord Jagannath decided that Purushottam Dev should be the king of Odisha. So that's how the, uh, the decisions are happening. Very similar to that when Gita Govinda issue was not resolved. So it was put on Lord Jagannath to decide whether the Gita Govinda should be chanted in, in the Sri Mandir or not. And Lord Jagannath decided that. So these things are there to get the justice. So I explain all this stuff starting from the glory uh, our mm, uh, some proofs and we decide what is our fabric and judicial system what is my objective my objective is that we know all these stories but we know very less there should be some more researcher come out from the academia to do all this stuff then this kind of history should flow to the next generation so maybe some new Kapilendra Dev, Kharbal or Karakunda come. Maybe some new Buddha, Prabhas or Mahiban Baba will come out from our state. The story of our history need to be told in larger platforms. Uh, larger platforms means at the national level, at the international level. Whatever the document I observe and I found, I observe that these documents are prepared by the outsiders. I didn't mean that outsider means um, non odia peoples so these are collected from the uh, like uh, from the australian museum from uk museum now more research more investment need to be done on these topics which will helpful to understand our glorious history and it also help in our international strategy techniques now these days there are a lot of conflicts going on on south china sea which is mostly the Kalingan Sea. So uh, those strategical techniques also can be useful to save our nation and to create an opportunity for business in Southeast Asia and finally bring back our glory. So I'll ending my talk with two quotes. One quote is from Utkal Gaurav Madhusudan Das who mentioned that Uthare utha utkala santana uthubi tu kebe kete dina Purva gaurava purva sahasa padivaki kebe manne And 
there is a very famous dialogue from gajapati narasingha dev ai gajapati narasingha dev decided to go on the offensive not only to put on end to the bengal governors but also to restore dharma over mathura and kashi the war for dharma will go on till the lord of universe with us and this is not just in aya they fought for 30 years they fought for 30 years with tugluk and this masked them multiple times and every time they come back with larger forces uh, so there is a historical evidence when giyasuddin balban attack the orient army he bring 3 lakh soldiers with him still he is not able to win so that's how the the kalingans are very powerful and they hold the whole attack now in north india it was very common that they mention togalak is a sanki like he is moving the capitals here and there he is he is moving the strategic capital here and there because of the fear of ganga dynasty fear of narsingha dev now finally there is a very famous folk tale in in orissa when i was there in uh, joranda so one of the baba he mentioned that the 500 years are over so i asked him what exactly it is so he mentioned that gajapati pratap rudra dev only allowed 500 years in 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 this area to kali on the request of uh, lord vishnu means uh, chaitanya mahaprabhu so that is over so this the time to reclaim the glory now i always wonder when i study the history pratap rudra dev who is fighting in three fronts in north in south and in western side and he is winning but why it happened that he left everything and started uh, chanting the lord vishnu name and he dismantled the army all the stuff is happened simultaneously so there are lot, many reasons but one of the reason is bhakti andolan which is mentioned in our books so chaitanya mahaprabhu after chaitanya mahaprabhu all these uh, tricks and techniques and other stuff is bit uh, uh, diluted by the bhakti and we need to regain those things so these are the sources uh, from where i gather a lot of information you can also go to the sources to gather many informations uh, particularly i also look to go towards the southeast asia particularly indonesia and malaysia to gather some more information probably i'll do that in future and thanks for your time over to you kaveri uh, thank you sir uh, now anybody is having any questions you can ask now sir uh, uh, one hour was so amazing you have shown us like you've taken us back to centuries and everything was just going through my mind uh so you have talked about how uh, the kalinga culture has influenced indonesia part in part uh, myanmar uh, sir have we uh, in uh, been inspired has anything come back to us like has our has there been any um, effect on us like have we uh, like got something in return when so much of exchange cultural and maritime exchange was happening like is there any proof about anything that you know like we have got from them from any of these countries yeah yeah as i mentioned um, i saw you two pictures related to the and uh, to the foreign relationships and one of the picture you can observe there is a giraffe uh, which is like a uh, like a gift to the kalingan kings and uh, as uh, there are bali jatra during which people are coming from the south east asia bring lot of uh, stuff from there and that's how the culture is very rich like today odisha is one of the poorest state still we are following our richest culture uh, why because we are uh, getting lot of uh, wealth from their end okay so like uh, example is kerala kerala is one of the uh, richest state because their relationship is good to the saudis to the saudi arabias similarly uh, kalinga was a very rich because they are 
getting lot of wealth from the southeast asia from the whole region now that's a very rich region till date also there are conflicts going on on that region particularly in philippine sea and other stuff areas there are a lot of conflicts going on now if they are going with lot of big ships so definitely they are bringing lot of wealth as well now the question would be valid okay if they are bringing lot of wealth so what happened why we are not so rich and the answer is laying in that uh, slide so where i mention that uh, we fought for 90 years with the uh, colonial forces and i'll explain like how the godajata system is broken down now once the godajata system was broken down from that time we started losing our wealth our power our influence right so now previously like uh, the main culprit to broke down this uh, gadjata system is man singh who was the uh, the senapati or the uh, general for akbar and he observed this very very keenly and he identify how the kalingans are very powerful right now he is the person he first introduce that how to break down these gadajatas right now there are lot of story behind that how the mukund dev and the king of sarangagoda ramachandra dev they fought with each other and finally the gadajatas are become independent and after that there was no persons who can again reunite this whole system and we are uh, started losing our wealth our influence and every stuff and yeah there are very famous quotes from the british uh, uh, that time they called us the collectors british collectors and they mentioned that how they destroyed systematically uh, the uh, the culture and the influence of these uh, these area means like if you observe the uh, map of uh, mansing there are four areas actually one is jalesar balesar area which is now part uh, the west bengal area then there is katak sambalpur area which is now odisha there are dandakaranya area which is now um, chatisgarh and madhya pradesh areas and there are uh, dand part area which is now andhra pradesh so these whole four parts they divided and they uh, systematically they disseminated our culture now that's how actually we lost most of these things but like in as i mentioned in the foreign records particularly sang tan and han dynasty they have the records uh, there are lot of uh, evidences in the museums like in german museums in uk museum you can observe there are maps there are concepts which are uh, beyond the thought of Uh, the modern scientist and those are still there and they brought that from from odisha from kalinga so if you want to go in depth yes there are a lot of opportunity to do research on other all these areas there are very few researches on this uh, yeah, yeah. question is it true that lord jagannath temple there's some gold and some like in kerala lord padmanabha temple they recovered that so uh, in lord jagannath temple would like people talk yeah, about yeah. yeah i already mentioned in bhogamandap which is in lord jagannath temple i i saw two pictures which are from there only and uh, regarding lord jagannath temple there are a lot of things particularly madala panji madala panji was destroyed by kala pahada kala pahada is again one of the general from mukund dev whose name was rudra madhav rai and he became kala pahada and he tested lot of madala panji uh, history but still we have madala panji which which has the traces of all these details the madala panji okay. is a, thank you yeah yeah um any other question yeah good evening sir uh, uh yes yeah sir actually i just uh, i am just listening to your words uh belonging to the uh, that means from the btech electronics background mtech computer science background and uh, then mba in the finance and finally 
saying something about the calling it's really nice but i want to know that how you have created such interest and how you have given so much time for this although this is not related to presentation <laughs> okay no worries <laughs> uh okay so actually i was working in punjab for almost 3 years uh, so during that i observed this uh, the punjabi people are very proud to their culture they always mention about their gurus and all the stuff and so when i observe very keenly and i observe the uh, guru nanak dev ji's stories and i found guru nanak dev ji is so much influenced with the uh, culture of odisha okay so similar kind of uh, 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 like uh, like ogira punnami were celebrating just uh, two days back they are celebrating as lohri we are celebrating raja sankranti they are celebrating as uh, julan so very similar kind of cultures and he was quite uh, put many practices from odisha in punjab because they are also mostly based on the cultivation and odia people are also celebrating this cultivation uh, cultures now once i got that then i started uh, drill down when i drill down i found many things about odisha and uh, i visited the national museum of uh, uk in london so there i found there are lot of sections about about the indian stuff and most of those indian stuff are related to odisha there are lot of uh, scripts lot of uh, uh, you can find the uh, statues okay so again the interest is go more deep and when uh, i uh, roam around like most of the time when i was uh, in odisha i go multiple places like i mentioned about sunya sainta personally i went to kakatpur and observe whether it is uh, giving you the right answer or not i observe that yes it is giving the right answer you can also do that same research you can go to the kakatpur check whether the sunya sainta is giving you answer or not similarly when i have gone through the australian um, maritime strategy they follow the strategy which is long back long back which is related to the kalingan strategy so it's give me immense uh, motivation to understand more the major issue is in our education system actually in europe in us they never stop the technical people to go into the art or the historical research but in india they stopped that they told no the technical people will go only to technology and the non technical people so they should research on these areas yes uh, but the reason that uh, i i asked this question sir belonging to technical areas uh, how you have moved forward okay okay sir thank you sir practically yes, practically technically if technical people and scientific people will go to uh, research in history they will give more input as compared to the non technical people that's my thought yes sir yes sir okay sir thank you sir thank you yeah, um hi i mean katan i have uh, uh, the last question i think uh, because uh, time limit is sir okay so uh, we have uh, we have a uh, glorious past and we have a lot of evidence for that so uh, what do you uh, think of this current situation are we still making glory or we are uh, slower than the past yeah we are slower um, actually we are bit behind to the um, modern race uh, bit behind in the modern race because as i mentioned odisha get its recognition in 1936 again and afterwards when odisha got its recognition after that there are a lot of conflict so there are stories regarding um, the congress and how they are not supporting madhusudan das so madhusudan das come out from their extremist utkal assembly need to uh, create its own recognition but uh, the good news is that after 2000 most of these odia people they are moving the ladder they are going up in the ladder and Uh, they are also contributing towards the society and we have started our journey hopefully we need more more lions i can say 
more singha bahus more kapilendra who can bring the past glory and we need the businessman who can create the jobs and the glory can be sustained only if we have wealth so we need to create wealth once we create the wealth the whole business world towards us then we can explain that yes we have a glorious past so these days maharashtra is one of the example sibaji is glorified in a multiple layer because marathi people sir at this moment are one of the richest community so first we need to create wealth bharat then definitely we will start uh, putting all our uh, rich culture again okay thank you um, so uh, due to time limitation we have to uh, stop here so i i request you to please switch on your video so that we can uh, take a, a screen sir oh, okay at this meeting yeah Yeah, everybody please switch on your uh, video yeah uh, with this uh, we are uh, we must uh, propose the vote of thanks so i must uh, have a conclusion uh, from uh, mr minakatan's seminar so uh, although this talk uh, was about a uh, glory of odisha it also contributes to the nations so um, when we are doing good the country is also doing good with us so since this is uh, a history and system for history there can be uh, many uh, arguments debate so um, possibly we can have some meeting uh, later also but okay on behalf of this computer science and engineering department of uh, sikha onsanthan university i would express our deepest gratitude to mr minakatan ponda who uh, devoted his uh, precious times so it's not only about this one hour he spoke he must have spent a lot of time uh, making this slide and uh, the stories and everything so uh, thank you sir and uh, i would also like to express uh, our uh, thanks to the organizing team uh, hod professor uh, devahuti misra um, organizer uh, dr madhuri rao dr sadar prasanapati dr divya sundar das and uh, we also thanks uh, dr kaveri das for inviting uh, mr menakatan ponda and last but not the least i would uh, express my deepest thanks to all the uh, audience uh, researcher professors uh, who are here and uh, make this uh, event successful i wish you everyone a great weekend thank you and thanks all a final words like from jay shankar that if east will grow the nation will grow thank you all yeah thank you thank you very much thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir